We're coming off a bad game. We're going into no game. What a time to relaunch Florida State Seminoles live. Here we are on a Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time. I got Logan Robinson from Knoll Game Day on the line. And of course, there he is, Jason Parker from Chop Chat to talk of Florida State football. So this is our new time. So you get out your calendar, whether that be the electronic kind or posted there on the fridge. And you mark us down for Tuesday night, every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Mark Rogers, hey, how are we doing tonight? Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. You cannot ruin our flow because for the first time since 2017, the Florida State Seminoles are bowling. We are going bowling. We are bowling. We are like Jim Jones bowling. But <laughs> this is actually a flow. That's what we call that a flow. That was that was a flow. I dropped 16 bars on you right there, but okay. I also now I've got the playoff show on right now because I want to see second straight win. That, that's that's two in a row right there. Second time in the season, two in a row. Does Florida State make the playoff? <laughs> I don't know. You never know. <laughs> what what did I miss? Some kind of an alert that the rankings have been extended to 75, not 25? I believe it's 72, <laughs> but uh, we'll find out. We'll find out in a moment. I hope they, <laughs> I hope they make it in the top Top this week. Whew. Man, they have some crazy medications down there. They do. They do. They do. This is not water. <laughs> That's even crazier than some of the kids take here in Tallahassee on campus. But hey, we won, and and as we've said, we're not going to take any win for granted. This is not the the Florida State football team of of 1999, 1993, or even 2013. You take every win you can. Florida State has won their second game in a row. They beat Alabama State. They beat them convincingly. And it wasn't a great job. We'll talk about it as the as the hour goes on. But Florida State got their second win. That's what matters. And they were back to a bowl game, bowl eligibility. Uh, is it the Bronx? Is it Detroit? Is it Annapolis, Shreveport, Tampa? Where will the Florida State Seminoles be bowling this year? We'll talk about that as the hour goes on. We, we will not talk about the Alabama State game as the hour goes on, Jason. Don't drive away my audience like that. <laughs> We can we talk about it for 30 we, seconds. We can, let's get this over right now. Okay. Your hot takes from the Alabama State game, Jason. Go. It is disappointing that that we and Al, the scoreboard said it was 49-12. It didn't feel like a 49 to 12 game. I texted Logan uh when Alabama State scored for <laughs> to make it 21-12 and said, Told you so, because I said last week, tell me why I should be convinced the Florida State was going to blow out the game. But but let's look at the positives. Uh, James Blackman had a good game. Jordan Travis had a great game. Uh, I think you'll see a little bit more of him. Uh, come the Florida game on November 30th, the defense learned how to actually intercept the ball and and run it back for a touchdown. Let's let's give a hearty Mazel Tov on that one. And like I said, a win is a win. Just take the win and move on. Yeah. How much will it take for you to refrain from saying Mazel Tov? Can I maybe maybe five dollars per show? Oh snap! I, I don't understand why you have to hate on the tribe. I'm a member of both tribes, both Judaism and the FSU tribe. I, I, I don't understand. You in the Northeast should know. You should hear Mazel Tov enough that you should know where it comes from. Wait, oh, we did not make the top 25. I'm sorry. I'm breaking news here on Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. We are not in the 21 through 25. Maybe in the top 20? I don't remember the last time I watched that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, we're not. I don't remember like, like really like watched it, watch. I, I really don't know when I've sat down and watched that since maybe 2015, 16, 16 like those two years. And after that kind of just didn't Wait. really. Oh, hold on. We, yeah. we are not in 16 through 20 either. Sorry. Sorry. Just mm -hmm. right there. I should probably not announce this, but I don't have my contacts in. So pretty much I'm just going to go in order and take any comment to the, to the Oh screen. no. Great. <laughs> Nicholas, Not with this show. Nicholas Burgess wants to say, so Logan, we still doing food. We'll Nicholas is from our, Nick, uh, yeah, Nicholas is from our Instagram show. I'm sure we'll get to that in a minute, the update on the coaching search and stuff that we've been hearing. It's been a quiet week though, but the Alabama state game was definitely a chilly one. It wasn't that uh, the score showed differently. It was some poor play for a little bit of the time. Um, James Blackman, of course, was your starter. Jordan Travis got in there and threw a little bit, if you want to call dink and dunks, but uh, nothing too crazy there. Of course, he ran and had a, had a very nice long gain. He obviously can break some ankles. Uh, I do expect him, like Jason said, to get some run time against Florida, and I think that'll be utilized very well. Uh, and then Hamza Nazaldine's pick six was incredible. 
I don't know why he's not playing the offense. I mean, holy smokes, he was going through kids and <clears throat> breaking ankles like it was nothing. Uh, Hampson Azeldine should go pro. He should. He should go get paid. Uh, he's had an excellent season. He also had one last year, but he should have uh, a chance to get some burn into the league next year. He should have a chance to go. Um, and he's by far your number one best player on defense right now for Florida State. Now that Marvin Wilson's gone, what do you have something to say there? Mike, I, just two things real quick. Number one, Florida's ranked 11th in the uh, in the latest playoff poll, so that's gonna be a great upset win for Florida State in two weeks. And also, uh, Nick List, I need I need you guys to actually listen. Those of you who are watching here on Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, it's great. We appreciate you listening to uh, to us and listening to our insights. I did not say it was a convincing win. I never said it was going to be a convincing win. In fact, before the game, I feel like I'm repeating myself here. I said there is no reason why we should be convinced that Florida State can handily win this game. And I just said the score does not indicate how tough of a battle it was. So please, if we could please listen. Thank you. Jesus. Right. Uh, Sorry. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else happened. Let's see what else happened during this game. I'm trying to think here. Senior game, the last that we'll see from a lot of people. I think Gabe Neighbors is your best uh player to come out of this class right now. I mean, I guess you could say maybe a tad bit of a, a tiny bit of, of Ricky Aguayo, but I think Roberto being there inside the stadium got most of the happiness and joy whenever they rang out his name, sadly. <laughs> but uh, Gabe Neighbors uh, is probably the highlight coming out from this senior class. It was an absolute travesty. Obviously, you've had guys split off and go different ways or no longer be with the team, but uh, um, that senior class got a win to leave Doe Campbell Stadium. Um, I'm trying to think, James Blackman no, looked we're, we're pretty talking, decent. We're, we're, we're talking way too much about the Alabama State game. I got to side with Mark Rogers on this one. I can't. They're quick. They're quick hitter. I'm, I'm this doing never the highlight. Happens. Jason doing agrees the, with me. It's the horn. Uh, it's the horn. It's the horn. Yeah. Well, you're getting five bucks. You're getting five bucks now. So now you're agreeing with Mark. We're not about not in this show. He's not. Oh, no, 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 no. You can't. Oh, it's not five dollars every time I say it. Got it. Okay. Can we move on? Uh, Harlan Barnett needs to stay in Tallahassee. No, we got coaching circles. We got other things. Let's move on. Let's let's You you, you were gonna go slide. You were gonna be fine with that. Wrap it up. Let's go. Let's move on. Uh, move let's on. see what else. Let's see what Laborn uh, had a decent game seriously logan uh let's see next one uh akeem dent also cannot catch an interception will he catch one before the season is over when it's right in his hands who's betting money on it who's oh man j job is uh, in the house uh, voice of college football back in action I love you, Logan. Go on, Gators. Man. No, no, go Gators. No. Go Gators. Jay Jobs says go Gators. Jay Jobs is a loyal, loyal viewer. So no, go well, Gators. Well, Mazel Tov for his loyalty, but go to hell with that comment there, Jay Jobs. All right, go to hell. Wow. Mark that one. Don't say that is anti. No, Nicholas. No. Mark oh, Rogers, hey, Mark hey, Rogers, hey, Rogers, hey, Rogers, no, uh, Mark see, Rogers, there's a problem, but I don't have my contacts. Uh, yeah, I need your contacts back on. Mark I Rogers is a I need something man. or nobody's Mark comments are going to the screen. Mark Rogers is a supportive man of the Jewish tribe. He loves me. He has brought me on as a member of, of both tribes. He's buying me eight presents <laughs> for Hanukkah. He has got this taken care of. He supported me on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Mark Rogers is a friend of the Jewish people. So thank you, Jason, for clarifying that. He sucks with it's his all just in good fun in regards to Jason's. He, uh, he sucks with his college football picks, but other than that, he's fine. We'll keep him around. Yeah, my, my college football picks are just garbage. By the way, LSU 13 and four. eight against the spread last week. Thank you very much. That would make you a lot of money. LSU two percent against the spread. LSU is number one. Ohio State is number two. Clemson is number three. Who's number four? Who you got, Logan? Real quick. Who you got? Go. One name. Number four. Who, who did you have in there? Jesus Christ. It's LSU, Ohio State, and Clemson. You got to pick one. Pick one. Number four. Go. First name. The, first Georgia. Name, go. Georgia. Georgia at number four. Okay. Georgia. Georgia is number four is the Georgia Bulldogs. Wow. Look at that. You know what? I should be – I think I need oh. to sign up for an even bigger – we should have a bigger show, oh, it. and it should no. be one no. analyst from each team and just – I think ESPN is ESPN calling. Oh, get, let me give me a second. Georgia, Alabama, or Oregon. Really, you had three names to choose from. Let's calm down. Put the phone down. Put put the phone down. No, I'm with Logan. This should absolutely be a bigger show. Yes, 
So yeah. everybody who loves watching this show each and every week, you know what you do? You go out there and you tell your friends and you bring them in here at 7 o'clock every Tuesday night. Tell Cam we'll do a preview for Miami FIU this week live. I think we're doing it for Friday. In fact, I can get some connections. We can do it live from Marlins Park, side of that game. Uh, then, then Logan, if he's not too intoxicated, he can do a show from Gainesville. Cause no yeah, I can go and guarantee you if I'm going to Gainesville. There's, I'm not going to be eligible to be able to uh, no come on here and hell. talk. Well, you're going to have to represent us because there's no way in hell I'm going to Gainesville. So that's all you. I've well, got have fun. Take... You have fun with that one. Logan, are you going to be eligible before the game to talk? Um, Before no. it depends on what time we're talking here because the game's now at 730. So that's all day to kind of oh. hang out and read my study my textbook and sit by the stadium. Yeah. But before it on, on Tuesday guaranteed on Tuesday nights now at 7 PM Eastern time, we will be here to preview that game fully. Yeah. Bring your, yeah. You're bringing a textbook to Gainesville. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, like I said, I'm my Florida Gator friend is going with me. He was, he, I got to make fun of him all in 2013. He's a big Tim Tebow lover. So I'll, he came with me to Doak. Um, I went to Gainesville in 2013. We won. I'm going again because I'm not scared, and I'm gonna enjoy a good time around the Gainesville. You're way too, you're people. You're way too friendly with Gators. They are the enemy. I'm fine. I'll, I'll be taking good care of myself. I think way too friendly. Just because you put on your little fake Southern accent, I know that you're originally from New York. I get it. It's I wish. It's a fake Southern accent. I get it. It's fine, but you're too friendly with these Gators. <laughs> you're the, What's up? Oh, yeah, because I hate Miami more than – You do hate Miami more. We Florida. Know. I hate Florida more you hate Miami. Why well, yeah. would Penn State for this clown show administration? I, I, I get it, and, I, and I'm, I've actually said this, and we've talked about this uh, on ChopChat.com. James Franklin would be great if James Franklin would leave Penn State to go to Florida State. But I think that falls under the moment of right now, Florida State needs to be realistic with what they had. If they had gone after James Franklin, maybe – in 2017, after Jimbo Fisher left, I think you would have had a better chance. I think right now, though, Florida State, and you're starting to see that with the latest news about Bob Stoops, how, you know, all of a sudden it's, oh, Bob Stoops is coming, and now it's, nope, doesn't look like Bob Stoops is going to be coming at all. I think you're going to start to see the approach going towards somebody uh, like a Mark Stoops from Kentucky, uh, Mike Norvell from Memphis. You're going to see more of a realistic option uh, coming in to Tallahassee. And I do want to actually give – Logan, a shout out though, because the friends over at Fox Sports Net who covered the game on affiliates across the country giving Noel Game Day <laughs> a shout out on the full screen, courtesy Noel Game Day. It was right there in yellow font. You didn't get to see it. You were at the game. But for those of us, I saw it and I was like, oh, damn, there he goes. <laughs> Love on Fox Sports Florida, no. Yes Network, everyone else who carried the game. So, Mazel talk to you, Logan. That was crazy. I got a text and from our group chat and our NG group chat with our whole team, and they're like, "Oh my god!" And they they said they said our name. They said our name, and I was like, "Oh god, what did we do? What did we do <laughs> this time?" And uh, just got a screenshot, and they were sending videos, and it was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, we just had like the candidates up there right now. But like what you were saying earlier uh, with. Uh, Franklin. I'm a big Franklin fan. I was a big Franklin fan. Uh, to hope, uh, supposedly, Franklin was interested in Florida State, but Florida State was more interested in Willie Taggart, and that's how it went. But I'm a big uh, fan of James Franklin coming to uh, Florida State. He's got energy, and he's also got the discipline that this team is needs in a, in a big, big way. Uh, but I don't know at this point where Penn State is currently at that uh, – he would leave for uh, Florida State. Um, it, it's tough, but it, it's interesting to see it now. You know uh, the the thing with Bob Stoops and an agreement, but latest meeting did not go so well. Uh, where things stand there, um, it's gonna. It, it's it's been a very 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 quiet week, though. Extremely quiet. Um, I wish we could have our our man uh, James come on here too and. Tell us from what we what he heard also, but it's been a very quiet week, um, and the coaching search enters week three with nobody knowing anything, and just makes it more fun to where we can start throwing out some crazy names for candidates that probably aren't true whatsoever. I think those who are holding out hope and the the slight hope that James Franklin might consider Florida State might consider, and then they might may go after him. 
I think you need to almost root for Penn State to get smoked this week by Ohio State because I think there's going to become the question, if you're James Franklin at Penn State, is Penn State a better program in 2019 than Florida State? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Do you, if you're if you're the coach at Florida State, if you have to if you have to turn around, your biggest challenge is Clemson in the ACC Atlantic right now. If you can conquer Clemson, because you look right now, there's a chance that Florida State could actually finish second in the ACC Atlantic at this moment if things play out a certain way. If you can eventually top Clemson you're going to be fine. But if you're James Franklin at Penn State, you're still in a division with with Ohio State. You're in a division with Michigan. You're in a division with Michigan State, who if Michigan State can bounce back and and turn things around. So you've got a, a much deeper competition in that group. So you have to ask yourself, if you're James Franklin, do I want to keep getting finishing second or third every single season, or do I want to go to Florida State and turn it around? So that could be the only option. So maybe you do want to hope Penn State gets murdered by Ohio State. Hmm. I think Penn State pulls off the upset win, but we can talk about that as we go on. Coconut King with the comment of the night. Good thing Mark Rogers TV is not the eyes of college football. Uh, Yeah, I went on a trip over the weekend, and I packed away my glasses. I don't even know where they are, and I've worn my contacts ever since. And suddenly I just realized I've been working all day without my contacts on because everything's right in front of me, and now, boom. You look like Jameis in 2013 yeah, there a little bit. You were squinching a little bit. Like. Yeah, that's what people typically do when they can't see something as they squint. I've, I've, yeah. been, uh, I've had glasses since I was 10, so whatever. I've, I've I think I've outlined like this since the show started. It's Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. This is our Florida State Seminoles live show each and every week. <laughs> We've moved from Wednesday to Tuesday. Tuesday, mark your calendars. Tuesday at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Understand that the Super Chat is on. You can help us uh, here at... Mark Rogers TV. The voice of college football. The voice of college football. <laughs> Sorry, we and, didn't uh, help contribute to the channel. Of course, like, comment, share the videos and subscribe. And uh, let's talk Florida State football with the Gators coming up next Saturday. Sorry, I'm watching Kirk Herbstreit talking about Florida State after he said he was done with Florida State. So whatever. I, I'm sorry. Right. I'm not paying attention to your little hand gesture there. I do apologize. I'm going to shop more Kirk Herbstreit, not you. But okay, go ahead. Also understand uh, shop at Amazon. The link's in the description section below. It's almost Christmas time. People are shopping at Amazon from what I understand. This is like a big outfit. So use the link in the description section below if you shop at Amazon. Can you imagine everybody that watch 16,000 subscribers? If everybody who shops on Amazon would do it with Mark Rogers TV's link. That's a man. lot. That's a lot of Hanukkah presents for me. We could do like Florida State Seminole shows every night. Lot of maybe, maybe who's who's doing my homework? For who's, people out there, I don't know. Who's doing my homework? Who's doing my homework and my essays? Is Jason gonna do my essays for me? Am I getting a Hanukkah gift from you from Amazon.com using the code word? Does Hanukkah? Natty Ice uh, pack and twenty four pack of Natty Ice work? I'm sorry, I already graduated. I don't drink Natty Ice anymore. But okay, <laughs> sure, why not? I'll take a gift. Come on, just if you're bored one day, you can start drinking it, or if you're having a rough day after Florida State plays uh, Florida on Saturday. Listen, Next Saturday. I'm playing. I'm joking with you. I, I'm not guaranteeing that Florida State is going to win. And, and somebody earlier wrote on him giving <laughs> me two reasons why Florida State can beat Florida. Because number one, and Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, can attest to this. It's a rivalry game. Anything happens in a rivalry game. There have been multi I have literally been inside the swamp when Florida State was supposed to run over Florida in 1997 on their way to the Orange Bowl. We were going to play for the national title. And Florida wrecked that. I, I still curse Fred Taylor's name for running over us for four touchdowns of that game. The following year, Chris Winkie's out with a neck injury. Florida comes into Tallahassee. They're supposed to beat us. We beat them 23-12. Peter Wark throwing the touchdown pass to, to Ron Dukins. Can, can Florida smoke us like they did last year? Of course they can. What I'm saying is in a rivalry game, anything's possible. I'm just saying don't sit here and say that it's a definite that Florida is going to win because anything can happen in a rivalry game. That's all I'm saying. I just gave you facts and data. I just gave you two years of data, Corey Arrington. Thank you for watching. This, this live <laughs> chat's uh, rather amusing, as it typically is. So I've got somebody on here, TK Clan Hip Hop, who claims that I blocked him at some point. I have no recollection of blocking Sorry, him. Sorry, TK. I had to block people. If you hit one of the hot button issues, 
you know what those are, race, religion, et cetera. Yes, you're going to get blocked or if you're personally attacking anyone. But trash talking, I had a Miami show last week where somebody was basically just in the live chat saying, Miami sucks, you're going to lose every game. Just making comments like that. And I had I had dozens of Miami fans saying, block this guy, block this guy, block this guy. I said, it's trash talking. Big I deal. Know. Take it. Yeah, you should have been there for our, should have been there for the FSU versus Miami combined show with Cam and see the comments of them taking me down. So, so, you, so you still don't know who that person was who was just writing Miami sucks, huh? We also have somebody here, Jason, who's asking if I'm going to fire you. Uh, yeah, I didn't I know saw that, that. You're employed, but uh, uh, <laughs> first, 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 first of all, my buyout is too high, so that's number one. I request, I request one Popeye sandwich a day for a year. Uh, so that would be my buyout on that one. And number two, yeah, I don't get paid. I'm doing this out of the kindness of my heart. I thought this guy got fired. No, this guy is still here. I'm going to stay now just to piss off Clemson <laughs> alumni 98. And just for that, go South Carolina. I hate Will Muschamp, but I hope he runs over you guys. And then Dabo tries to give his holier-than-thou BS after the game. <laughs> yeah, take that, Clemson yes. alumni 98. Man. I'm that. torn. Clemson alum 98 is a faithful viewer. He is. He's great comments. He is. Great, great stuff. It just makes it more fun here. Oh, it makes it more fun on a beautiful. Uh, yeah, just for a good old bye week. So someone, I, my man Nick, he comes in and asks some good questions sometimes. He's thinking that the quiet silence that has been going on this week and over the weekend is still pointing back to Bob Stoops. What do you think, Jason, since yeah. it's so quiet? And yeah, go ahead. We, I wrote this on Monday, and I I got a lot of pushback from a decent amount of, of FSU fans, and it was really disappointing. That's nothing but, new. That's well, nothing really, new. It's really disappointing because there's a section of the fan base, and I'm, I'm going to defame my alma mater for a moment on this one. There's a section of our fan base that is delusional as hell, and there's just no other way to put it. There's a section of our fan base still living in 1999, still living in 1993, hell, still living in the early 2000s when we were still winning the ACC on a yearly basis. There's uh, basically what I wrote was the whole argument of firing Willie Taggart with three games left in the season was a bad loss to Miami. Logan, I need you to back up. Jesus Christ, dude. Back up from the camera. Damn, bro. <laughs> um, but there was a, there's a section of the fan base that, that we got to fire Willie Taggart. We got to fire Willie Taggart. We got this thing in place. All the rumors, Bob Stoops is coming in. All these big name rumors were coming in. And here we are. Essentially, we're going on three weeks with an interim head coach. We've got, it's been since, since the third of the month, so we're at 16 days since Florida State fired Willie Tag. And the argument I got from the same people is, well, you want a coach who's going to respect the process and let them finish out the season at their schools. And that's fine. I agree with that. I think that they should let the whole process play out. My argument is if you're going to let the process hay out, play out before you hire a Mark Stoops, before you hire a Mark Norvell, before, or excuse me, Mike Norvell, before you hire any coach, why fire Willie Taggart with three games left? Did you really think Willie Taggart wasn't going to beat Boston College, wasn't going to beat Alabama State and get them to a bowl game? And there was one person who wrote to me and said, well, you didn't want to give Willie Taggart a chance to win three games because then we'd – the quote was, then we'd have to keep him around for 2020. So you talk about how dedicated you are as a Florida State fan, but yet you don't want Florida State to succeed. To me, that is bogus, and that is – is it's – it's borderline BS. I want FSU to succeed and win every single game. Whether Florida State goes 0-12, though, or 12-0, I'm a proud Florida State alumni, and I will I will be the biggest smack talker for the Garden Gold possible. But to sit there and honestly say you wanted a coach fired, even though he could have won, could have won three games to end the season, and then we, this team would be 7-5, maybe 8-5 after a bowl game, three improvement of last year, and you see the improvement going with three of those losses being by a total of three possession, three possessions, that to me does not make sense. So if you're going to sit there and say we want to stick around and we want, we want a coach who's going to show loyalty towards their school till the end of the season, but yet we're not going to show loyalty towards our coach, to me that's hypocritical. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it, if they didn't have a plan in place – they must have really thought, if what what's going on? I mean, we haven't been told by Thrasher or Coburn, the two leading the search, uh, and I guess the firm or whatever you want to say, but the two head guys at FSU, we haven't heard definitive that Bob Stoops is off the table, blah, blah, blah. It's just from, been from a spokesperson from another outlet that reported it. Uh, that's why it's been dead silent this week, and the Bob Stoops stuff has has, has been dropped down. It was from the Tallahassee Democrat. Um, and, you know, the the... Interesting thing to me is 
obviously the timetable that what it is right now. Um, and then also this Odell Hagens thing going on. There's the fan base is supporting them. Of course, the team is showing not just love for him, but also endorsing him to become the head coach. Um, but they're about to play next weekend in Gainesville to a pretty, a pretty good uh, Florida Gators team finally. Yeah. And they're, it's probably not going to be it – should, it shouldn't be a close game, but it's rivalry game, so it probably will be a little bit better. But Florida State and Odell Hagans will most likely lose that game. And so then a lot of the backlash of Odell Hagans and him not being hired will come to this fan base because this fan base can flip just like that real quick. Um, and to people really wanting Odell Hagans to be the head coach, um, he hasn't even been a defensive coordinator yet. So there's that. I know we'll get into that probably. But – but it's been very quiet, and, and the Bob Stoops thing, obviously the money thing is there. Um, and I, I'm just wondering if the deal really fell apart or they couldn't come to an agreement. Supposedly he went uh, – the Thrasher went and met with uh, Bob Stoops in Texas and Dallas. Uh, that's where they're going to hopefully finalize everything. That just fell apart and just disappeared. Like it, they couldn't find, they couldn't figure out either the money situation, or whatever. From what we heard, Florida State was working very hard to bring in a good amount of money. Florida State was re receiving donations or receiving, uh, what do you call them, donations, but they're not set yet. Uh, and yeah, commitments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it just fell apart. And Bob Soups, though, has been known to do this kind of thing before. So it's not a complete shock. And that's why it's not really like, oh, well, he's done it before. So. You know, FSU got played and whatnot. So, but it's been quiet this week. There's some names coming up and down, but a lot of coaches right now that they're looking at still have a pretty decent seat. Uh, they have uh, games on their schedule that they are wanting to obviously win and and finish off the season um, before they even get into you know talks with another university to distract and all that kind of jazz. And that word obviously spreads out quick inside of university and it gets to your locker room and screws up the rest of the season. So that's probably why it's really quiet right now. But I mean, the money difference between what, what's Bob soups going to make as a head coach, 150 something. Too much. Too He's going to make too much. And the problem yeah. is they went out there with a sales pitch. Like this was the FSU team of the dynasty era, the early two thousands and even the 2013 team. And they didn't come in with a pitch of being realistic. And that's the biggest problem. And the problem is you're going to have a section of the fan base of the big money boosters who are going to be upset with whoever's hired. If they bring in, let's just use, for example, my guy would be Mark Stoops from Kentucky. And I've said this before on this show, why I think he should be the coach. They would lose their mind. People are going to be upset because they're going to say, Oh, look at his record at Kentucky. They're not going to look at, he turned around Kentucky from a doormat to a 10 win team last season. Who I'm pretty sure Mark Rogers, did they not beat Penn state in the citrus bowl? Mark Rogers. TV, the voice of college football. Did they not <laughs> Penn State? In the the most Kentucky in the beat Penn State, State in the Citrus right. Bowl last year. Right, so they did. So that's what I'm saying. So they're not going to look at that. They're going to look at his overall record, and not see what he did in turning around a doormat, as he said, his doormat into a decent team. That's I'll let point. you guys continue in just a second. It's nice to know that we can entertainment entertain some people. Hi, Karen. Uh, Karen says you guys uh, crack me up. Crack up. I'd like to see a picture of Karen. I, I would just be interested for some reason to see I'm, her. I get it. I understand. I mean, you know, I see if <laughs> a talent. I get it. Um, I have no idea. I, I, we don't, but we're going to move on after this one so that we can stay yep. clean here on this one. So we, we want to um, hit on, yeah, the coaching candidates. My, 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 there's, there's going to be a section of the fan base who's not going to be happy. And unfortunately, it's the section that constantly goes on message boards, comments on our stuff, on 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 chopchat.com, on no game day, on war chant, you know, fifth quarter, everyone, and this is all they talk about. And they're going to sit there and they're going to complain because Bobby Bowden circa 1993 is not going to be the head coach. Jimbo Fisher circa 2013 is not going to be the head coach. They're going to complain until, until, until we live in the past. And the problem is if you keep living in the past, you're, you're never going to be able to move forward into what could be a decent future. That's the problem. Yeah. Well, now the the big talk this week is <clears throat> Odell Hagens, and the only way this should even create a conversation on social media, it's so irritating to me. The only way it should create conversation whatsoever is if Odell Hagens and goes and upsets UF this mm -hmm. weekend. Then it starts as a conversation. I don't even think he should have been interviewed until he would have defeated Florida. He hasn't been a defensive coordinator. I understand he has big loyalty to Florida State. Last year, before Willie Tiger was hired, he said he wanted had no, no interest in at, 
at all. Now, all of a sudden, he does have interest. No, I have high respect for Odell, Odell Higgins. I think he's a great coach at what he does. Obviously, he could go coach in the NFL. Any any college football team would love to have him. I know there's been some rumors about Alabama has shot or tried to get him multiple times. I'm sure they have. I'm sure multiple. Even even uh, from what I heard, Dossie had chances to go to the NFL um, and get chances there as an assistant. Uh, Odell Higgins is one of the best assistants in the country. No wonder, but he hasn't had defensive coordinator uh, experience. And by far, a lot of people are griping that they want a lot of experience, but then they're shooting and wanting to have Odell Higgins there. I understand it. He's a great man. I've been around him. My dad has high respect for him. I've been around him personally. Great man. But if you, if you want the experience, that's not going to be the route, but the only way this would create conversation, my opinion for anybody on social media, wait a little bit, see how he does against Florida against, uh, against a pretty decent team at seven 30 at night in Gainesville. I think you'll get your answer. And I think that will get shot down by a lot of fans uh, well, next weekend. I'm going to disagree with you for one moment. And I'm going to come out and say it. If Florida state beats Florida on November 30th, Odell Hagen should be hired as the head coach. And I'm going to tell you why. In 2017, it was a dumpster fire. And we've talked about this all the time, that Jimbo Fisher left FSU a absolute dumpster fire. He did not have the loyalty of the players that he has right now. And the fact that it is a decent young team, you have a lot of guys who are going to be coming back in 2020 and sticking around. You look at his resume if he does beat Florida. Once again, I'm saying it as a huge if. But let's say good things happen if Florida State beats Florida. He has wins in 2017 that qualified FSU for a bowl game. He has the last bowl win in Florida State program history. He has the two wins this season that qualified for a bowl game. And he's, he would have beaten a team who right now, like I said, is ranked 11th in the polls and right now is on track to head to a New Year's Six bowl game, maybe the Orange Bowl, maybe the Sugar Bowl, whatnot. What else does he have to do? I get that he doesn't have a coordinator, but you can bring in guys. And if you don't think that – Coaches and players aren't going to go to war for somebody who, I'm sorry, is a bigger Florida State person than you and I combined and, and, and anyone who sits here and talks Florida State football. Odell Higgins, if you cut him open, literally bleeds Garnet and Gold. I've interviewed him, Odell multiple times. I know him very well. He is Florida State football. And I think you have to legitimately – I don't think he would get hired, but I personally think he should. Now the question from Gator Nation 2019 – do you think Clay Helton is a valid option? And so what's your thoughts? Well, first of all, Clay Helton still has a job for the moment at USC. I think he will eventually lose that and Urban Meyer's health will be okay. And all of a sudden his his heart and head will be back into college football, just like it was after one year from leaving Florida and going to Ohio State. Um, if Clay Helton is out there, my – I think USC is a lot of the same ways as Florida State as far as the structure, as far as the cluster, you know what, of their administration. So, and I'm not confident with what he did at USC. So I would probably, that'd be a hard pass for me, uh, for mm -hmm. him to Tallahassee. I'd also like to point out one thing, and this is for Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Remember, we have to throw that in, Logan, every time you say his name. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise he throws a little history. The branding, the brand, it's for the brand. Right. It's for the, the brand. Yeah, yeah. I haven't called Logan on that. You're the one who promised it. You're the one that needs to deliver on it. Since week one. This is the first time that this game, Florida State and Florida, is on the SEC network, 7.30 p.m. It's the first time this game is not on ABC, CBS, or ESPN, or the one game on ESPN2, since 1986. And that's when the game was not televised because Florida was on probation. What, was this the show or was it Miami? No, it was this show that I had to correct some people on television rankings, correct? It was this show because your argument is how great Michigan, Ohio State is, and that's because of your generation of old people up there who have nothing else to do but sit in the cold on November 30th and talk about how Archie Griffith ran for 200 yards in 1974 and his way to the Heisman Trophy and how Bo Schimblackler – you know, and, and that's what right. Think? I was citing the TV ratings from 1975. Yeah, it wasn't from last year. You're right. I, how did I possibly make that mistake. mistake? Is Kent State playing yet? Let me take a look. By the way, we got Northern Illinois, Eastern Michigan. A little action football for you, Mr. Kent State alumni. Go Golden Flashes. Okay, let's check up on uh, what's going on here in the live chat. We got Slim Shady Canes. Thank you for the contribution. Good job. And also Slim Shady Keynes was basically saying that uh, these Dion rumors, is, is there 
anything no. remotely to that. Okay. It's a, it's a, it was a it was a sexy rumor. I think Dion is a great supporter, and I'm not saying Dion wouldn't be a great defensive back coach. I could easily, I could honestly, and and all. Shoot, all Florida coaches. State needs anything defensive back coach. Uh, I might, yeah, start, yeah. I might, I might be hired soon. No, you, dear God, you would not. Uh, <laughs> no, I played, no. I played safety no. my freshman year in no. high school. You also, I, I, you also went to Charles High School, and anyone look up Charles Whoa. High School? So let's let's look up. Whoa, there. Whoa. Oh, yeah. hold up! Now my my senior year, we brought the first playoff berth and the first uh, right. winning season, and the first we beat Lincoln for the first time ever. My, my senior year, we, we won our first game, but we're not going to talk about the other guy. Moving See, on. there we go. Moving, yeah, moving let, on let's not, moving let's on. not go the Al Bundy path and moving I'll be talking on. about oh, our I, exploits oh, on the I, football I was field. nowhere near as good of an athlete. Oh, please. But I'm just saying, Dion would be a great segment coach, but I think defensive coordinator, head coach, there's there's not a chance on God's beautiful beautiful green earth that he becomes either the defense coordinator or the head coach for Florida State. Yeah, that, that was a funny time. I think either – I think it's so funny, but if you just sit back and just think about it, either Florida State is throwing some bones just to tell Dion to do these things and these other coaches or whoever else and trying to just start things just to create some conversation and create some distraction for what's going on, maybe with Bob Soups or something. But I don't understand – where that even came from, or where, usually Chef, or was it Chef, or was Ian Rappaport, it, I think, it, that it, came it, out with it. It was, it was, it was Ian. It was and, and, was. Yeah, and he, he started, real, and I'm sure that, I'm sure that Adair, and, and, and Dion has been very, very vocal in his support of Flores He was very vocal in his support when Willie Taggart got hired and whatnot. And I'm sure he probably said something in passing, like, man, I, I here's what I would do in Flores State. And somebody took it, like everyone in our generation, and goes, oh, let me tweet that. And it blows up because it's Deion Sanders because he's still a name. Yeah, well, it's it's funny times. We did just post a video on our site. We had to we had to try to entertain, and first take was saying both Stephen A. Smith mm-hmm. and Max Kellerman said that that would be an excellent hire. That's the hire that they need to take in order for Florida State to have see some progress. And that right mm-hmm. there is why you get paid millions and millions of dollars. I mean, if, they, if you want to hire a winner, I mean, one name that's not being talked about would probably be John Harbaugh, of Baltimore Ravens. John Harbaugh, Get that trash out of here. A that prime was, NFL job for Florida State. No, 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 that was a trash talking because I'm a yeah, fan he's a Steelers I'm fan. I'm a Steelers fan, yeah. Uh, don't, don't even get me started. We still got y'all at the end of the season. Okay. Eight. And I'll, I'll take all my second and third stringers that I have right now. You're, you might, you might need. We had y'all. We had y'all's best game against us. Not even the Patriots. Who who won that game, right? We, we well, uh, our quarterback got knocked out. We won, right? Yeah, by in the overtime. Sorry, Charles Hyde, you beat Lincoln Marvel Pop. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> this is why this is on primetime Tuesday nights by itself now. 101 watching, Mark. Who likes? This is where Logan make that hundred. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't watching for right. the last minute. Or we this only have the show where Logan pitches likes. So Logan, go. 17, 17 likes, and we have a hundred and two people, and it's still increasing. Hundred two people live watching. Only seventeen likes. I don't know where the like button is on my screen, but it's right over here, I think, somewhere that way. Like the screen, press that button. Like it helps Mark get a lot more knolls in here, a lot more viewers. It helps helps the ag algorithm bring it up um and i think if you if we don't get it to 50 likes i think i might be done here i'm just kidding <laughs> first of all, first of all Logan, I'm just Logan, I need you to not use words like algorithm i need you to not try here to if we if, if we get 50 likes jason won't say mazel tov i, I wasn't we'll preview florida that next was week. the word he was using jason but jason? Uh, yeah uh, no it's a solid use of the word he used it correctly i'm impressed by it. algorithm well i work in social i work in social that's my that's my skill all right it's time to reset it's mark rogers tv the voice of college football this is our florida state seminoles live show every tuesday night this is, this tuesday is my right now at seven o'clock eastern time mineral tim i will let you and other buckeye fans know that uh, ohio state live will be this Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. My Wednesday has been changed, obliterated, thrown into the trash. So our various live streams will be thrown on to other nights of the week. So stay tuned for our programming updates. One of the many reasons why you have to be subscribed to Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, to get the notifications. Rashad Gibson is asking about uh, 
uh, firms that do coaching searches. I will catch up with that question later and I will continue to blindly look through the live chat. I sometimes blow up the screen to where the, the live chat is like taking up the entire screen. So if you see me doing this, uh, that's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm kind of inconsequential to the show. We just let Jason and Logan tell you about Florida State football. And I'm merely here as a mediator and to correct Jason about 17 wow. times every show. <laughs> Mark is getting a little bit older, guys. So if you want to go to Amazon, buy him a pair of bifocals. Since obviously the old man can't walk to his backpack, you can also get him a walker, apparently, or you know, some nice orthopedic, you know, sole for his shoes, apparently, or something. Like, what are you, what is your backpack? Ten feet away? I think. I think. Uh, get up and go get your glasses. I think the good Lord gave me maybe the choice between losing my hair, getting gray hair, and losing my sight, and I went with losing my sight. You do we have went that hair. route. You do have good hair. I've got a nice yarmulke mark right here. Here's the word yarmulke right there. That's got a nice bald spot. Hey there, Jason. Uh, we just dropped to 42 viewers like that. Yeah, we're gone. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know what I just viewed. I don't, I don't think I'm even allowed to see this at age 22 yet. No it's one told hair. me this. It's hair, people. Calm down. You both have beautiful hair, and I'm, my hair doesn't exist. It's fine. <laughs> I will. I say we raise some money, get you a hat. If y'all want to start a GoFundMe, I'm gonna start doing that. Starting. I'm not ashamed of losing my hair. It's fine. Or if anybody out there, and and, and I state that, not saying that there's anything. Uh, a lot of people look great. Here, I'm very well defended by my, my pattern baldness. So you guys talk for one second. I'll be right back. Oh, perfect. Now this is an issue. Can we to it where it's just us? Yeah, and I, I, I really don't know if I can oh. knock out that middle. Let's we'll see what that does. Dang. No. Oh we'll wow, that get a bigger does. view. That didn't do anything. Uh -oh. we'll see what that does. <laughs> Are you <laughs> see what that does? Is that better? That that does. Too late, Mark. That Dang. does. There he is. Oh. And that you're off up. center. And your foot. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, oh no. He screwed up his internet. His yeah, I'm Mark. Mark is just extremely sensitive. There we go. We're back. We're you don't back. want people. Jeez. I wish that was a little bit louder, but didn't really have a major effect. I got some distance on that one. All right. Who's leaving? Yeah. Who? It's, it's 744. We've talked about the coaching search. Is there any other ground that we need to cover with the coaching search? If not, let's start making some bowl projections because, of course, the Florida State Seminoles have it. An outstanding six and five record. So they have qualified for postseason play along with 82 other teams in the country. Now, here's the question that, that's, been, that's being brought up. And I'll ask you this question, Logan. If you're Florida State, and let's say you are a six and six team, let's say Florida. I don't get this question. No, I'll ask you. You know what? I'll ask you both, but I'm going to ask Logan first since he's, since he's the Florida State expert on this one. Yeah. Let's say Florida happens to pull out a victory on the 30th. I don't think it'll happen, but who does? Let's say Florida pulls out a victory. And Florida State is a six and sixteen. If you're a bowl game like the let's use for example the Pinstripe Bowl in the Bronx, um, even I've seen some reports of maybe even the Belt Bowl in Charlotte, one of the more like more of the middle of the road games with ACC tie-ins. Do you take a six and six Florida State team with the name recognition and the fact that they are going to bring some fans, or do you think Florida State will drop down to a game like the Independence Bowl, like the Gasparilla Bowl in Tampa? Which, by the way, just for the record, as somebody who looked at flights, I'd rather have the drive from Miami to Tampa than the flight from Fort Lauderdale to either the Bronx or Detroit. Which, uh, yeah, I ain't driving that far. Um, uh, let's think here. I mean, of course, the bigger name is the the big deal here, of course. I think Florida State may, might have went to the Independence Bowl because they were desperate and had to get one more win, and they were like, all right, screw this. what you get. You're going to go to a crappy bowl and go play Southern Miss. But – uh, maybe the bold people, if they're smart money wise, and definitely if you put in Tampa, you're going to get a lot of nulls to go either way. And, and then you'll most likely have a coach hired. So you'll have a little bit more excitement. A lot of the, a lot of the, a lot of the fan base will go. So there's that. Um, I, I did hear about the pinstripe bowl and there might be a uh, possibility for them there too. Uh, and what are the two biggest teams right now? Is it, is it Tennessee and there's another there's another team. I haven't really done a lot of bowl searching junk because I usually wait till the end of the season and kind of start really looking looking or at, <clears throat> close to the Florida game every year. 
Um, I'm trying to think. I think it's Tennessee, and I can't. There's another team that they're saying the Gasparilla Bowl, or there's some small rumor, but I can't really cite that as something that is that I can confirm. But right now, Tennessee is obviously one that I think Florida State fans would buy tickets to go play against for sure. I think that's two massive names in college football that I think would draw a lot of interest. But money wise, bowl should do it. I think Florida State was just pushed into a crappy bowl in Independence. Uh, the Independence Bowl in Shreveport because they're like, well, you were desperate. You had to get a win, and that's what you get. I think you're going to see FSU make it to uh, – I've seen a lot of predictions, and 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 I say this biasly as a, as a dire fan of the New York Yankees. I would love to see them play in the Pittsburgh Bowl. I'd love to see them play in Yankee Stadium. I think that would be a great opportunity. Mm-hmm. I think it would be uh, cold as hell. I think I'd have to pack 12 sweaters if I were to go to that game. Um, yeah. I, I, I can see them doing that. I think you're going to either see them go there – um, or I wouldn't be surprised to see them in the military bowl. I've seen there's been reports that are projections of them maybe playing possibly Navy in that game. This team has played one time, 1978. So I think you could see that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think you're going to see FSU play in a we'll, – we'll, we'll use the word decent, a more, a more decent bowl game, one of those games, than you would see them before you see them going back to Shreveport or going to Tampa to play mm-hmm. in beautiful Raymond James Stadium. Yeah. So late night Tuesday over the past few weeks with the college football playoff rankings coming out and then also into Wednesday, we have seen a spike in comments here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, like the one here from Clemson alum 98 that bring to light that there's a certain individual that's missing from the playoff selection committee that would um, very much improve the process. Well, once Kent State gets in there, maybe you can you know talk about your fighting golden flashes. So there you go. <laughs> Florida State Seminoles live every Wednesday. I've been saying that for 27 weeks. No. Every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, Logan Robinson from Noel Game Day and uh, front and center, Jason Parker from Jump Jet. Thank you. Oh, no, man. Wait 48 minutes for that. Jeez. Double hey, are, so, you're right. the possible bowl projections. And of course, Jason, if you go to the pinstripe bowl, you'll be playing a big 10 team. And of course, going back to what, what do you say? Like 1940s football? I mean, I think we'll score more than three points, but I'm not sure at this rate. Okay. Uh, that's just typically what I hear from you when referencing the big 10. No, I'm referencing that you guys play all your games at 12 o'clock because everyone has to take a nap by three. <laughs> if you take your nap by three, then you're at golden corral by four 30. Huh. All you can eat sirloin and shrimp buffet. While. You know, then you've got to get home because you have the Saturday edition of of uh, Wheel of Fortune Jeopardy, and then you fall asleep to Matlock on Hallmark Channel. I get it; it's fine. I understand. Uh, it. It's 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 a it's a nice little Saturday there. I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a good time. It's a good Absolutely. little. Game. I'm a little mad that we're playing Florida at seven thirty at night. I'm gonna have to take a nap before that game. Good God! I'm gonna have to have another ten uh, beers before it. Ten. Mm-hmm. Well, before it, so Logan, well, Logan. another, another. You didn't, and another. Like if Logan. it was at three thirty, then I wouldn't have as ten more. But. Make, Logan, make good choices. That's all. I'm I saying. will. I promise. I will promise. Wait, I'm not going to. Just repeat after me. I, Logan Robinson. I, Logan Robinson. Will not end up in the Alachua County Jail. I will not end up in that jail. <laughs> I didn't know what you said. <laughs> I didn't. Alachua County, Alachua County is where Gates was going. I, love, I, oh, I say, yeah, I like Alachua. It. Good God, it's like Tallahassee. Everything here is a Native American name in this state. Come on, Lake Okeechobee. <laughs> to question, you know, you know that there is a small rumor What's that? trickling outside of not this is government that for that they are kind of thinking about someone's pushing very hard for Florida State or for Florida State to take away Seminole from uh, the university. I don't know if that's trickled down to you. That happened That happened when I was in school. That was my senior year when the NCAA was busy uh, trying to change the names of schools that use Native American mascots, and some schools did. They want to change it to Renegade or something. So Florida State won't because Florida State has actually built themselves, built a relationship with the native of yeah. Florida. It's the Seminole tribe of Oklahoma that's not happy, and that's because they're not getting a piece of the money. Anything that has a seminal head, like this right here, like my shirt right here. <laughs> everything in that room. Every, yeah, oh, crap. Yeah, everything in this room right here, it has a seminal head on it, <laughs> including my my wonderful Sharpie container that even has my name on it. <laughs> yeah, that's how I did it around here. 
Anything that has a Seminole head on it, the Seminole Tribe of Florida gets a little bit of the action there. So that's why they have no problem with us being the Seminoles as long as the money keeps coming in. Um, but no, it's never gonna it's never gonna change. And and do I think it's stupid when when certain you know certain people wear Indian headdresses and whatnot and try to act like they're members of an Native American tribe with every stereotype possible? Of course, it's stupid. You look like an idiot. But Andre, as far as you <laughs> the name, you're fine. Andre, that's something I'm also very, very scared about because if Odell Hagens does lose, uh, he gets the job and he loses games where he should win and it just doesn't turn out well. This fan base is like no other. They will strip you apart and tear you in pieces in a matter of a couple days. And yeah, I, I don't want to see that happen to Odell Hagens. I don't, he's going to, he would have to win almost, <laughs> he'd have to win. Multiple, multiple, multiple games on a good winning streak uh, worst, before he do the, what? The worst thing that happened to this fan base was the 2016 season because come, finishing that season with a 10 and three record, they included three wins by a total of six points, including the one point win over Michigan, the one point win over Miami. It was the worst thing. The writing was on the wall that that team, you know, be, between Derwin James getting hurt, between the team getting blown out by Louisville in the third game of the season. That team was, was starting to struggle. And you could see the struggle was starting at that point. But then being able to pull out those close games, winning the five games in a row at the end of the season, everyone looked at it and said, oh, 10 and 3. Maybe this team was better than we thought. You start out number three in the country in 2017, and you get beat down by Alabama. <laughs> the hell was that? Beat down. It was a beat down. It was 24 to 7. It was a beat down. Let's be honest. We got beat down in that one. And we did not look good in the second half of that game. Well, like I said, the momentum was killed when uh, Looney Murray did not have a pass interference for that. They would have probably scored. Guess what? Alabama was going to beat us no matter what. Not the biggest. <laughs> and Alabama was going to kick our butts. No this is what. correct, but the 28 team would have taken that performance against any of those 12 teams <laughs> on their schedule and probably finished 12 and 0. This is why we don't do shows on a bye week because this is what happens. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, says the same thing. Logan, are he's shotgunning a beer right now? That's why the camera was on me. <laughs> he was sitting there with like Stone Cold, you know, tapping the beers together. Like Stone I, Cold. I wish on it, our season finale. It's not we'll been on me that. because I've had my nose about twelve inches from the screen trying to find comments. Uh, otherwise, I apologize apologize to everyone for not taking their comments to air. I've been a little lax on that tonight. There's a Matlock marathon on. If, you if it's watch. longer than hit the like button, then I'm not uh, catching too many of them. But, but what I would say is the 2016 season was the starting of the writing on the wall being what this team really is. And winning all those close games kind of it, – it kind of put a, you know, for, for lack of a better term, it polished a turn of what that season was. And then 2017, everyone's like, oh, well, where did this come from? No, the writing was on the wall starting in 2016. And that's when you also start to see the rumors of, of Jimbo saying, oh, I'm out of town. And what happens? He bolts. Mm-hmm. No, not John Gruden. Not John Gruden. John Gruden is the most overrated coach, and I love what he's doing with the Raiders. I respect what he's doing with the Raiders. He won, <laughs> love what you did. He won a Super Bowl with Tony Dungy's team, and I'm not a huge Tony Dungy fan. I'm not even a Bucks fan, but he won that Super Bowl with Tony Dungy's team. Let's be honest about that. John Gruden might be one of the more overrated coaches. Sorry. I saw. I saw a question. Uh, is the Bob Soups officially done? 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 Um. I don't think so. I think it's just a very quiet time right now. The university, a spokesperson gave everyone thousands and thousands and thousands, millions of FSU fans that are out there that um, Bob Stoops is no longer oh. on, is not on the table or is not a candidate. Uh, but uh, just, just let it play out a little bit of time. I, what we've been saying is let it more time. I think is a better for Florida state. Of course, Everybody wants somebody right now, but if it's taken a little while or if it's kind of quite like dead, dead, dead silent right now, there might have been something that's going on on the back end that's already been done or did yeah. or first done of, did. First of all, done or number one. Let's talk about that. We'll talk about your English after we get off the air here on that. I, didn't, I said done, did, or. You said done, or first of all. Second of all, I'm going to ask you a yes or no question. Yes or no question. If you did not know who your head coach was going to be on November 3rd, should they have fired Willie Taggart on November 3rd with three games left in the season? Yes or no? It's it's a one-word answer, yes or no? No, but I do think Florida State loses to Boston College. God, you, what? It's one word. No. There we go. 
Yes. Okay, yes. Let's clarify something right here. I want I want to follow this <laughs> pattern of thought here. Let's let's start with Jay Jobs' comment. Uh, this is going to lead me right into my next argument here because Jay Jobs knows what's going on and he knows, Jason, don't mess with the voice of college football. I don't. You just told me that you would not hire John Gruden to coach Florida State. No, I would not hire John you, Gruden to coach Florida State. No. Are you nuts? No. What? What? What is your What is your theory behind John Gruden? Because he, he what's my he theory? Bucks, he led a Bucks team. Oh. My theory is winning a lot of games yeah. and championships is better than losing games. That's my theory. Oh, you hear him interrupting me right there? What what games? Look at his record with the box here. Do, do you really? Do I need a Wikipedia job? No, you don't need a Wikipedia anything in the history of the NFL for me. I got it right here. Doom. Okay, so Tony Dungy. Hold on, we have three minutes left. Let me let me say my piece and I'll give you the final word. Because wait a minute, you've been talking for fifty seven minutes. <laughs> I'll take the last three. First, first off, you got thirty seconds. Give it to me, Jason. All right. My argument is the fact that he won a Super Bowl with somebody else's team. He basically got handed. You act like it's a college program with somebody else's team. They don't recruit the players. You hear this? Tony Dungy took the same roster and couldn't get to a Super Bowl. John Gruden won NFC title games or AFC title games that that Dungy couldn't win and then won the Super Bowl with the same roster. You're proving my point. They didn't go recruit the players. It's John not college football. John Gruden gets credit for somebody else's accomplishments. I have not seen John Gruden. Now, here's what I will say. It's crazy. If he's on the Raiders, if he does something with the Raiders, I'm talking about a deep playoff run, I will give him more credit because that Raiders team was a dumpster fire before he took it over. Exactly, and they're 6-4 and four right now. And, and he took the same the, roster that Steelers, was winning like four games, and he's 6-4. and four. Aren't the Steelers 6-4? and four? I wouldn't know. My team's 8-2, and two, but what, what's the Steelers record? Where the steel? How did I? You trying to get Wait, me on? Bro, this, see, this, is a, this is you a diversion are. tactic, Logan. Yeah, as soon as I start to put him in his place, no. he's gonna no. direct it somewhere else. He wasn't paying attention, so he's either texting or he's doing something. So I'm like, yeah. let me get his attention real quick. Get that away from me. Okay, get that John Gruden out of my is way. an excellent football coach by any measurement. This is not college football. This is the NFL. So the general manager and the front office is responsible for the roster. For most organizations solely the head coach that was previously there tony dungy who was a very good head coach was not able to win a conference championship game nor a super bowl john gruden effectively took them two steps further with the same roster talent by both winning the conference championship game and the super bowl and going to other playoff appearances with the tampa bay buccaneers who had never won anything at any time in their history then he goes to the Oakland Raiders here in the last two years, and he takes one of the worst five teams in the NFL, and they're currently sitting at 6-4 and four with, again, generally the same personnel, if not missing one of the best defensive players in the NFL in Khalil Mack. This is his 13th and season. Amari Cooper on offense. This Thank is, you. No, I'm going to finish up right here. They lost their, lost their best season. offensive and defensive player, this and they're a, still upgraded considerably. In his 13th season as an NFL head coach. Don't give me his record. Seven games over 500. I don't care. He won a Super Bowl and coached for an organization that has been a loser for 50 years. He hasn't been to a playoffs since Logan was having a bar mitzvah. He hasn't been a coach for that long. He just got a head coaching job again after sitting out for 10 years. He's busy working for the worldwide leader, which is where he should be, talking about things he doesn't know, coaching football. Because otherwise, he gets, a, he gets a, an, an NFL job and only improves the 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 uh, win loss record by like 300 percent. Mark Rogers instantly, even after losing his best offensive player and his best defensive player. It's eight o'clock. It's getting close to my bedtime. There's a match. Absolutely. On. Golden yeah, Rose. Golden Girl Fun, shout out to shows based no on predictions Friday. this week. Uh, it's Jason Parker from Chop Chat. It's Logan Robinson from Noel Game Day. And this is our new time uh, here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, talking Florida State. And of course, next week is the big matchup, the annual rivalry game against those hated Gators. I'm going to need to turn this thing around because we've got a college football playoff ranking that I need to address. So we will see you in just a few clicks. Good night. Have a great night. Really love it.